I showed you the golden rectangle and I said, look, people will think, yeah, that's pretty beautiful. If you go and look up, you know, pictures of like the Parthenon, ancient architecture in like old times, uh, or even really modern things, you're like, yeah, okay, golden rectangles are appearing everywhere. Uh, we looked at the golden spiral. Where did we see the golden spiral? Shells, Shells Galaxy. right? Um, galaxies. Uh, you can find other places as well, which I'd like you to do later today. Where does this puppy turn up? Well, I'm going to show you. If you Google it, you'll find out. <laughs> yes, this is true. Um, can we um, can we get the blinds, please? I'm going to take the blinds. If we just do like, um, just do the back one. You don't need to do all of them. Um, yeah, just do one, and those two will leave open. Okay, now. That'll do. Okay, so, William, you're going to have to give me a hand. How's the exposure look? Is it super bright, super dark? Is it okay? It's all right, all right, excellent. So, to show you how incredible the golden angle is, just like every other golden thing that's out there, right? First, you need to learn a little bit of botany, okay? So, botany is about study of plants, yeah? Now, here's a bunch of flowers, okay? Now, the, the only critical piece of information you really need to know botany-wise is when a flower grows, you can almost see it, right? Can you see there's a whole bunch of little cells in here, in the actual center of the flower, in between the petals, right? Um, what you need to know is that a flower grows from the inside out, okay? From the inside out. If you squint, I might even zoom in a little bit, you will see, like, look, these cells are small. They've just been born, as it were, and then what happens is they migrate outwards, and as they do, they, they grow, they get older, and they get bigger, okay? So they start from here, and then they grow outwards, okay? Now, what a flower wants to do is it wants to be, as all creatures want to be, as efficient as possible with, like, the space that it's got, because, you know, nutrients, <laughs> I was going to say nutrients don't grow on trees, but, um, <laughs> well, they're plants. Anyhow, nutrients are in limited supply. Right? So we want to use as least of them as possible to create as much of this as we can. Okay? So they're going to spurt out these new cells kind of like in a circular formation. And they'll rotate around and send these cells out at different angles to fill up this kind of circular shape. Now here's the way they do it. What they're doing is, um, starting from the center, and then they will go through some kind of rotation and send out a new cell, and the new cells will start here and migrate outwards. So let me give you a really, really simple example. Here we go, we'll start with here. Now, imagine for me, before I press go, and you see it happens, it's gonna send out a cell, it's gonna rotate halfway around the circle and send out another cell. Then it's gonna rotate another halfway around and it's gonna send out another cell, and on and on and on. Now what do you predict will happen before I say go? You're going to get a straight line, aren't you? Uh, in some ways, you're going to get two straight lines, one going this way and one going that way, because it keeps rotating. So let's have a look. OK, fair enough. And you can kind of make out, look, you've got the really, really small cells here and the big ones here because they grow out further. Make sense? OK, what if I did a quarter turn, right? What if I did 0 to 5? Well, it's going to send a cell out, Quarter turn, sell out, quarter turn. So you're going to get across, aren't you? Right? This makes sense. You can see the way that it works. Are you with me so far? Okay. Now, if I put in, now unfortunately I can't put fractions here, or maybe fortunately, but I put in this, what do you predict will happen? This is like a third, isn't it? It's pretty close. It's not exact, but it's a third, right? Now, when I did a half, we got two lines. When I did a quarter, we got one, two, three, four lines. This is a third, so what do you predict? Three lines. Three lines, right? Okay. Now, in a second, right, I'm going to put a new number in, okay? I could do, I could do a fifth, and you would rightly predict that how many hours would you get if I did 0.2 up here? You would expect five, wouldn't you? Okay, now I'm not going to put that in because that's too easy. I'm going to put in 0.4 instead. What's 0.4 as a fraction? Two fifths. As two fifths. Pause for a second. Don't say anything. What do you predict will happen? It's not a fifth, it's two fifths. So, are you ready? Here we go. And. 
Okay, now hold on a second. It wasn't a fifth. It was two fifths. But I still got what you probably predicted for a fifth, right? Why is that? Why is that? Hmm. Yeah, Harry, do you want to give a suggestion? Um, because uh, two is a, um, an even number and mm -hmm. five is a odd number. Yes. And because it's still rotating two fifths all the way around, at some point you will have reached all of the fifth marks. Very good. Let me repeat that last phrase again because it's so crucial and I'll say it another way. Even though, like, it's two fifths, not a fifth, right? Because two and five don't, they're not going to factor with each other, eventually you're going to hit all five of those spots. Here's the way to work. If there was point two, it would go one, two, three, four, five, right? Just one time, one fifth at a time. Because two fifths, instead of going from here to here, it'll just jump over to here. But it doesn't matter, because it'll go one, two, three, four, five. It's still going to get to all the same spots, it just gets into them a slightly different order. Make sense? Okay, now so far we've been doing some nice, neat fractions, okay? But watch what happens if, for instance, do something like this. Now, I'm going to pause and I'm not going to hit go yet. What do you predict will happen? What do you expect? For a half, we got um, a half turn. For a quarter, we got four arms. For a fifth, etc. Hmm. Got a prediction in your hand? I'm going to hit go. Now, a couple of things are interesting here, right? Shout out something that you observe. They're not straight anymore, are they? Before they were exactly straight, now they are not straight, right? What else do you observe? It's a spiral because they're not straight. Okay. What else do you observe? I have, count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven arms. Now I wonder if you can think about why there would be seven. And they, there are meant to be seven, okay? Um, number one, why are they no longer um, straight, okay? Well, let's go back. A result that would be straight would be something like point two. Okay, point two, that's fine. Uh, point eight, that'd be okay as well, right? In fact, all of them, if they're one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, Five fifths? Well, not five fifths. That's not. That's just going to send about this way, aren't they? Right. All of them are giving you these five. Okay. But if I do something else, right? Like say point seven. You know, what do you expect? Ready? Straight or curved? Straight. Straight. How many? There are ten. Why is it ten? It's seven tenths, isn't it? Okay. So why do these give me straight lines? In fact, if I have you know halves or quarters or fifths, they're straight. But for some, like forty-three over hundred. Oops. I'm not getting them straight. Hmm. Over 100 is like, uh, the difference is noticeable. The difference is noticeable, so it's like, okay, well, like, how about, um, yeah? The rotation each time is noticeable enough that it'll make a spiral. Okay, so, so it's something to do with how far you're rotating each time. Yeah. Okay, now this is great, right? This is so cool because this is, do you not agree this is maths? We're doing maths right now, right? Mm. But this is not the kind of maths you're used to. It's like, what? It's just, just tell me an answer, okay? But that would stop us doing the actual maths, okay? Let me tell you why it's spiraling. This number doesn't fit neatly into one. 360 degrees, if you like. There's no combination of 0.43 that you can heap up on top of itself so that you eventually come round to the same spot. Okay, now let me come back to 0.25. Okay, the reason why you'll get straight lines here is because once you've done four quarter turns, you are exactly, exactly back where you started, right? And if you did a fifth, five turns will take you there. And if you did a sixth, six turns will take you there, right? But if you do a number like that awkward one I just gave you, well, let me pluck out another one. How about that? Now this is interesting, right? There's more arms, but they're still spiral, are they not? Okay. 
because no matter how many lots of 0.23 you do, you'll never get back to one. Do you see that? You'll go 0.23, 0.46, 0.69, 0 0.92, and then the next one will be 1.14. I've shot past one. And then you keep going around, you still won't come back, right? You'll have to do 100 of them before you come back. So you're getting this spiral, right? Here's the thing, right? Ready for your mind to be blown? If you've got rational numbers in here, you are always gonna get either straight lines or spirals, okay? But this, look out here. It's so inefficient. Somehow, without doing any maths, no gaps, no gaps. How did it do it? Well, if you take a familiar number, Right? Yeah. Ah, now, before I do it, okay, what I want is, I said the problem was with rational numbers, okay? Rational numbers are going to give you, like, if it's over seven, you'll get seven arms, okay? Uh, if it's over eight, you'll get eight arms, and so on, okay? What I want is something that's not rational, right? Not rational, okay? Now, what's a famous irrational number? Pick me pi, a famous... Pi. pi! Pi, sure, okay, now, I know pi to a fair few decimal places, right? Now I could do more, but um, that's, um, that's plenty, okay? Now, I'm going to, for a sec, in a second, I'm going to ignore the three. Can you tell me why I can ignore the three? Because three goes one, two, three, it actually has no effect, right? Any whole number of revolutions just disappears, okay? So I'm just going to make it zero point, okay? All right, now. Predict, predict. What do you think will happen? Hmm. You ready? Here we go. So many chicken nuggets. <laughs> You're like, well, number one, they're not straight. That's a plus, okay? But they're also, well, not very efficient, are they? How many arms? Seven. Seven. Why are there seven arms? Why are there seven arms? Because, as you might know, uh, pi, right? Pi happens to be very, very close to this number, 3.1428 from memory, okay? Which is why we use 22 over 7 as an approximation. It's not, it's not equal, but it's close enough to three decimal places. Pi is close to, well, this part of pi is close to just a seventh. So you get seven arms, okay? So even though this is an irrational number, sorry, that's not an irrational number. Even though this is an irrational number, it happens to be very, very close to this rational number. So you get it kind of behaving like one. Does that make sense? So what we want is a number that's really, really irrational, right? And the, the more irrational it is, the more dense everything's going to be, right? So time for the review. Now, I think that's pretty amazing. Okay. Yeah. Now, what what was this um what was this topic like? We're looking at the golden ratio now. What's the topic? Beauty and mathematics. Do you not agree that that is beautiful? Right. If you don't, if you look at this and you don't think that's beautiful, uh, true story. You know, um, in the in the in Paris in the Louvre, right. Um, there's the Mona Lisa that's hanging up on the wall, okay? And, you know, someone comes along and says, the Mona Lisa is there, it's very old. Who says that this is a really good piece of art? Like, art's up to interpretation, isn't it? Like, what if, what if some people say, Psh, that's rubbish? And there's a guard there standing there next to the Mona Lisa, because there always has to be, right? And says, you know, the time has ended for this piece of art to be judged. Now, it is the viewers who are judged. Does that make sense? Think about it, right? If you come to something like this and you think, ah, I don't think that's beautiful, it says more about us as viewers than it does about this. I think that's beautiful and that's what the golden ratio is about. 